Das ist ein Zufall. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Sound working okay? Yes. Or for now, we've had some, it's been a bit temperamental, but we'll, hopefully we've got that fixed. Um, for the, those of you, the YouTube viewers, there have been some issues with that, and hopefully we have it fixed. Um, Samantha's been working on it, Mark's worked on it some, so hopefully we're good to go. Um, well, as, as most of you know, the Yagel family has moved in next door, um, probably pretty exhausted. Um, but, uh, but we're excited to have them here, and I hope they, they feel likewise. Yesterday was a pretty exciting day. Um, a contingent of us went down to Lexington for William Yagel's ordination as a deacon, and it was really a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, if you um, have a chance, um, you, you can get on the diocesan website, and you can watch it on YouTube. It's really a wonderful ceremony where William and two other deacons were ordained. It was really a pretty exciting, exciting day. Um, the, uh, I think the whole Yagel family participated in one way or another, so it was really special for them as it was for all of us. Um, so next week is William Yagel's first week here. It'll be morning prayer. Um, he kind of surprised us. I didn't expect this, but, but if you see... Uh, uh, a new person in, in robes with Father Laycock here, and that's William, and please introduce yourself, and, and uh, so we're really excited to have him here, officially, unofficially, whatever it is today. Um, um, next week, after his first service, of, of, we'll do the morning prayer, as I mentioned, but it's a, uh, it's a parish picnic afterwards, hopefully the weather cooperates. Um, does anybody, Andy, want to give an announcement about uh, uh, the details with that? So uh, we're providing the barbecue and buns and asking that people bring side dishes. And there's a sign-up sheet out in the parish hall on the podium there uh, for you to sign up for what you might be able to bring. Uh, we will need a little help for those who would be able to help us set up tables uh, and chairs. If you get here about 9, 9.15, um, we can, we will have things sort of stacked and ready to go out so we can quickly set up and we're going to have a couple of tents and, uh, um, so if you can, if you can help us, uh, set up in any way, that'd be great. And while I've got your attention, um, now we've got name tags that we need to begin to wear again. So there's a bulletin board out there with all the name tags on it. I would request that you please try to remember to take them off when you leave and put them back on the bullets and board. So, uh, please try to wear your name tags for a while to give the Yale family a, a, an opportunity to know exactly who you are. Um, Father Brad Laycock is here for Holy Communion today to, as the celebrant. We're excited to have him here once again. He sure, sure has been a steady steady force for us for the last year and a half. Um, so after after this week, we won't be seeing him much. I think he comes back once in August. But please thank him for all that he's done for us to see us through the last year and a half. Um, I think the schedule will look like three out of four Sundays per month will be morning prayer, um, at least for the next six months. And we will have a, a priest um, celebrating um, Holy Eucharist here once a month as it stands right now. Um, we're, we're in need of people to sign up for flowers and for coffee hour as hosts. Um, um, so everybody please look at your calendars and the sign up sheet is out here in the hall. Um, I think everything else is in your bulletin that I know of. Um, um, for today's service, just a note, instead of Nicene Creed, we'll be renewing our baptismal vows. Um, I think that's it for my announcements. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to, to add? Yeah. Perry? Mr. Jim Slosher suffered another fall last Sunday. He has two more fractures of his vertebrae, and Lee was not going to be here today because she didn't want to leave him alone. So, just... You guys out of time. 
Yeah, I just wanted to announce that we have one senior this year, high school senior, that kind of slid by me at first, so we're a little behind the, the curve on that, but I have her basket out here, so she's going to college in, uh, I guess, in August, probably. So we're going to try through the summer to get her things together in that basket, and then we'll either present it to her or we'll just make sure she gets it. Through her. Thank you. Yes. Other announcements? Well, let us prepare ourselves for worship.
welcome. This is the second Sunday after Pentecost, and we'll continue on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. I will note that the page for uh, where it says renewal of baptismal vows, and the page shows is the page for the Nicene Creed, and we will be doing the Nicene Creed. So don't be surprised when that comes up. Mm -hmm. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires to know, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. He said, 
Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Psalms for today are both Psalm 42 and Psalm 43, and we will read those responsibly by half verse. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night. While all day long they say to me, Where am I to shall I? I pour out my soul when I think on these things. How I am in the multitude and led in the house of God. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving. Among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in the Lord. For I want to make it a blessing to him, who is the fellow of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me. Therefore I will remember you from my hand of joy, and from the deeds of my life, among my life's circumstances. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to the God of my strength, Why have you forgotten me? And why do I rest so heavily while my enemy oppresses me? While my bones are being broken, my enemies mock me to my face. All day long they mock me and say to me, Where now is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God. For I want to give thanks to Him who is the God of my mountains and my God. Give judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked. For you are the God of my strength. Why have you put me from you? And why do I go to so heavy while the enemy oppresses me? Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me. And bring me to your holy hill and to your body that I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness. And on the heart I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God. For I will give thanks to him, who is the hell of my countenance and my God. Our second reading is from Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you were all children of God through faith. 
As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on the land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. 
When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man whom the demons had gone sitting, from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people surrounding, of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had been gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happily for you, this will be my last time with you in a regular supply capacity. It's been a rewarding time for me, but your long wait is over. And while I thought William would be with you for the first time next Sunday, uh, I was delighted to get a text this morning saying, could you use a deacon? <laughs> to which I texted back in full caps, yes. <laughs> For those of you who know about texting, full caps means shouting. <laughs> so I'm delighted that William is here this morning. As you may know, Jonathan Harrison, Harris assigns me as supply at numerous churches over the year. But regardless of where I go on any particular Sunday, my morning routine from week to week is pretty consistent. I set the alarm, get up, wash, and dress in my clericals. I wouldn't be the same me standing before you if I were standing here in my pajamas. And that, I guess, is my fear and the fear of every clergy person. Well, probably two. One, they're going to oversleep the alarm. And second, they're going to forget their sermon. I've only done the latter once. Another example, uh, as much as you might like me and accept me as an individual, what would you think about me if I showed up in shorts and a t-shirt some oppressively hot Sunday morning? Clearly, shorts are far more formal than pajamas, but in both cases, I think your perception of me would be diminished if I fail to show up in my clericals, or at very least in a jacket and tie. Rightly or wrongly, the clothes we wear are normally the basis for many of the impressions we form about people, especially if we don't know them or don't know them particularly well. For those of us who were students in the 60s and on into the 70s, we had to dress differently to make a statement about who we were and who we were not. Blue jeans were my favorite back in the day, bell bottoms, and maybe perhaps a tie-dye t-shirt made a far different story statement than a three-piece suit. By the way, as the 60s were beginning to draw to a close, I became a banker. I traded in my bell bottoms for that three-piece suit, at least during the week. I sold out, as many of us used to say. Now, I guess you may not expect this in a sermon any more than you thought you'd be hearing about pajamas. But do you know the origin of the term bloomers? A woman named Amelia Bloomer was concerned about the plight of women in the 18th century, about how they were forced by convention to wear tight, unhealthy, 
restrictive corsets and undergarments. So Ms. Bloomer invented a pant-like garment that took the name Bloomers to give women more freedom of movement. And maybe the loosening of the clothing was also a way of speaking to the need to reduce the social restrictions on women. Such, ob such observations give us a reason to reconsider the idea that what's on the outside, like clothing, is of paramount, paramount importance rather than what's on the inside. And we should remember that Jesus criticized the religious leaders of his day for worrying too much about the outward form of religion and too little about their innermost thoughts. But sometimes it's the externals, like clothes, that lead us towards the internals like a change of heart. In speaking to the Galatians about the changes that had to take place in them through their baptisms, Paul tells them that Christ has made all of them, each and every one of them, into God's very own children. <coughs> but what if they felt that they were different? I suppose if they all felt fundamentally, fundamentally changed by their baptisms, Paul wouldn't have had to write that letter to them in the first place. But maybe their internal feelings weren't the point. Paul tells them that in baptism they have to put on Christ. He uses the image of clothing to talk about their new relationship to God in Christ. All the external labels by which the world pigeonholes people. Labels like Jew and Greek, male or female, slave or free, don't mean much because they have now clothed themselves with Christ. Elsewhere in his letter to the Romans, Paul tells them essentially the same thing. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. As we Episcopalians practice it most of the time, in baptism, we are either held by a parent or we stand up in public have a small amount of water poured over us in a very tangible, very public, external way. And that makes us a Christian. In that moment of baptism, you may not be all that you will be as a Christian, but you are on your way. That public, external, and tangible act is important. You see, sometimes I think that we may have come to put too much stress on inner attitudes on psychological states, on our feelings. For example, I don't always feel like a priest. I love this little story, and you can perhaps change the genders if you would like to, uh, but it's early in the morning, and the couple is still in bed. The husband says, I really don't want to get up and go to church this morning, to which his wife responds, I know, honey, but you're their priest, and they're expecting you. <laughs> There are times when I get tired, feel incompetent, say the wrong thing when I should have said something else, and maybe even if I don't show it, I lose my temper and run out of patience. Some days I just don't feel at all like going out and being a priest. But what do I do? I go ahead, put on my clericals, and go out and act like a priest anyway. I'm sure it must sometimes be like that for you. You may not always feel like a Christian. You may be unsure of what you believe. Maybe then you really felt something when you first became a Christian. Maybe you felt very close to Christ. But over the years, perhaps your initial enthusiasm waned. What then? What should you do? Well, you get up and you put on your Sunday best, or at least that's what we used to, but it's not as important anymore. And you go to church, and you go through the prayers, and you sing the hymns, and when it works, by the end of the service, you feel like a Christian again. You really do get close to God. Sometimes people call going to church, uh, going to the filling station. You've probably all heard the expression, talk the talk until you can walk the walk. Maybe our internal feelings are, to a major extent, dependent on upon our external actions. I'm convinced that you're here this morning because you have put on Christ. The old you has been, or is being, transformed by the imposition, the taking on of a new nature. 
There is grace for us in this affirmation. Our relationship with God is a matter of something that God has done for us and to us. It's not about anything that we have done for God. That's called God's grace. God claimed us and our souls in baptism. Most, but by all means, uh, not by all means, all of us, were probably baptized as children. For infants, it was more customary than it is today to be baptized in a white baptismal gown. So you can see the imagery. When we change our clothes for baptism, symbolically, we put on Christ, and with the water and the invocation of the Holy Trinity, we become a new being in Christ. Most of us have been conditioned to think of religion as a private affair. But is it? Isn't there great value in external public practices that may lead to internal commitment? Isn't that also true of marriage? I can recall the young man who told me before his vow renewal service, when I put on a wedding ring, I had no idea of what being faithful of what being married to another person really meant. But you wear that ring around for a long enough time, and it comes to you. One day you wake up, and you are faithful. Maybe fidelity begins with a willingness just to go public with a wedding ring. That's making quite a claim for something so small as a wedding ring, or the sign of the cross on the forehead. Paul is making just that sweeping claim for the power of water in baptism. In baptism, the priest makes the sign of the cross on the forehead of the newly baptized. It's a practice that the church borrowed, I understand it, from the Roman army. When a man became a Roman soldier, he was branded, marked by the sign of the emperor on his forehead to show that he now owned, owed allegiance to the emperor. The sign of the cross that we make with the oil of chrism on the forehead is the external sign of the one to whom we now belong. I love the story about the family that was driving home from church. The father asked his daughter about Sunday school, about what it was like that day. He said, oh, it was great, Daddy. We talked about the cross on my forehead. The father looked over and he said, but honey, you don't have a cross there. Sure I do, Daddy. We talked about baptism this morning. The priest put it there when I was baptized, and he said that it would be there forever. So maybe how we act externally can change us internally. The way to be a Christian may be to get out and start acting like a Christian. Today that probably does not mean to dress in a certain way, but it may mean to act in a certain way. If we do that, we may become what we proclaim. I heard of a student who promised to do one thing for God every day, promised never to end his day without reading at least one chapter in his Bible. Now, that's rather a small thing to do for God, but that's what he promised. Two years into this daily disciple, this discipline of Bible reading, he acknowledged that his whole life had changed. By ordering his life around that one commitment, his life had been reordered. Occasionally, he was forced to tell others that he had to leave because he needed to get time to get home and to read his Bible before bedtime. They, of course, wanted to know why, and then he had to explain. And in the explaining, regardless of whether it kindled a spark of faith in his friends, he became stronger in his faith. External action led to internal change. As the baptized... You are those who have put on Christ. And I wonder if there is a promise that you need to make or something that you need to do which might say to you and to the world who you are or perhaps who you intend to be by God's grace. Amen.
you're able, I invite you to stand with me as we turn to page 358 and affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not by name, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was a man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's church in the world using prayers of the people, Forum 3 found on page 387 of the prayer book. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. And that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the word and the sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We especially pray for Pete, Georgie, Suzanne, Sue, George, Virginia, Mimi, Jane, Dottie, Al, Kylie, Sarah, Carrie, William, Connell, Elizabeth, Melissa, Caroline, John, Kathleen, Johnny, Nolan, <clears throat> Shirley, Barbara, Karen, Forrest, Noel, Brad, and Leticia, Joanne, Jim, Joe, Gloria, Anthea, Jim, Bob, Kara, Connie, Noah, Bill, Mike, Thelma. William, the Shoemakers, Jim, the Spruin family, Marlene, Betty, Robert, Greg, Eric, and Gerald. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let thy perpetual shine upon them. Praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. They may also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. The Diocese of Alabama. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Turn to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by all we have done, and by all we have left undone. We have not loved you with our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be glad by your will. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Share that peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of life and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. <laughs> Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom. And the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and security, to put guidance in singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Dear friends, be careful as you go out into the world, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourselves and one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High. And be silent, for sometimes God is but a whisper. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia.